Hey, everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, and Apple. Over 25 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And stay up to date with all the updates on the Mike Wagner Show on our Facebook page. We're here with a wonderful author and a special guest right here that just <laughs> up and um, we'll, uh, we'll introduce her in just a minute here. So she's the author of Rebecca Rising, I Found Courage and Self-Love and Sunday 830, Two Get Decades of Life Planning. And of course, we'll have our special guest, but and of course, um, you know, just has a great story to tell about as well, too, finding courage and a lot more. And, um, you know, and, and live from the beautiful studios in um, south of L.A., ladies and gentlemen, live author Rebecca Thompson. Rebecca, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Mike. Um, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me as your guest. Well, it's a pleasure as well, too. Looking forward to what you have. So you're an author of a couple of books, Rebecca Rising and Sunday at 830. And you've been also doing some writing for quite some time. And of course, it talks about um, self-love through friendship, coaching, and a lot more. And of course, you also have a background to tell as well, too, that influence as well. And before we can get to all that, uh, tell us how I first got started. How, how I got started? Um, so, geez, just a little background on me. I'm a small town girl from western Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh area, and um, grew up there and went off to Penn State to major in engineering and met uh, my um, college sweetheart. We got married and moved off to Rochester, New York, where we both got jobs as engineers. And we were kind of living the American dream, um, working good jobs and bought a house, started raising three kids. Um, things were going great. And he started his own business. And uh, then things started to go sour, you know, as they sometimes do. Uh, the economy wasn't doing so great. And um, his clients weren't paying their bills. So we weren't paying our bills. And he started drinking. And he got like really... Uh, unfortunately involved in alcohol and um, it just kind of went into a downward spiral from there. And that was sort of the the jumping off point for the story that I tell in my book, uh, Rebecca Rising. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, you know, you, you talked about how you got started, like say met in college, it's your typical American dream and what you did and everything else. And of course, you also took some steps and uh, you, you know, how you first found out about the uh, alcohol problem and what you did about it. What were the solutions? And you also took out some things like with um, Reiki, tarot cards, and everything else. And uh, what led you to that path? Yeah, I think, um, you know, things, as I said, were starting to go sour. And I think I was just reaching out for, I was, un, I was getting increasingly unhappy. And I was just looking for something either to distract me or to, you know, help me find happiness in some way. And I, I would describe it now as a spiritual journey. I mean, back at that time, I didn't have any language for that. I was just getting invited to some interesting stuff and I was going <laughs> and gradually over time, it started to change me. Mm -hmm. And what was that one moment that influenced you into writing those two books? Wow. Um, well, the, the Sunday at 8.30 book, I'd been working on that with a friend. It was co-written with my friend Darlene Ryan, and we'd been talking about writing it for many years. And one of the things we do is we read books together. We, we have a life planning process that we engage in. We've been doing it for over 20 years. And um, part of that plan is we every year we pick a dozen books that we're going to read together. And one day her daughter came in the room and said, when are you two going to stop reading books and start writing one? <laughs> And we, we kind of laughed. And then after we thought about it, it was like, mm, why not? So um, my memoir, Rebecca Rising, started out as a chapter in that book, Sunday at 8.30. Um, we, we write about or we, we set goals in different areas of our life and uh, in this life planning process. So whether it's career goals, um, health goals, financial home and family, all different kinds of things. And one of the categories is spiritual. So I'd been 
on the spiritual journey and finding my own personal power and my marriage and so on. So Darlene said to me, why don't you write a chapter on that for our book? And I started writing it and I said to her, you know, I, I think it's more than a chapter. <laughs> I think it might be a whole book in itself. And she said, go for it. So that's really how that got started. And, you know, I like to think if my story can help somebody else, um, you know, I felt like I was in a really stuck and different, difficult place in my life. And if, if that can help somebody else to hear how I got through it, then it, it's worthwhile to put it out there. Because mm -hmm. a little scary putting it out there. Right. And, and also, too, you embarked on a healing journey, which led to a variety of spiritual practices. You learned how to love yourself and finding freedom from the situation you thought you were stuck. And what was the first thing you did besides self-love that you um, got involved with? Yeah, it took me a long time to actually get to self-love, Mike. I mean, that that's kind of a big concept, or it was for me. Um, one of the first steps was just um, just doing things on my own outside the home. I mean, I you know I've been married for a long time, and um, I, my priorities were all about taking care of my kids and taking care of my home and trying to keep things as normal normal as possible for my family. And just starting to do things on my own was. Um, a big step um, and going to a dowsing class was the very first thing I did and you know I didn't know anything about dowsing I was very skeptical of that kind of thing and thought that maybe I was even a little bit crazy for going to it but um, I went and kind of got hooked on this whole idea of the movement of energy and and harnessing that energy in the world that you know is kind of separate from yourself mm -hmm. and, and what is dowsing by the way this so yeah, I, you know, I, I, before I went to the class, I thought of it as like using a fork stick to find water. And I guess that's one aspect of it, but it's <laughs> right. Um, but it's it's using using um, energy to ask questions and learn from that. And in the class I took and there's there's different ways where you can use a pendulum. Um, there's lots of different ways you can do it. But we were given dowsing rods that were actually, you know, two two rods that you hold them parallel. And they kind of, they can swing freely back and forth. And you ask a question and you can get yes or no answers. And, you know, I thought this was all, you know, just a bunch of crazy stuff. Um, and I thought, you know, the teacher gave us these rods and said, go in the corner and play with them and learn how to get your own yes and how to get your own no. And I thought you had to have some kind of special powers to do something like that, right? And I thought, I'm going to go up and play with it for a couple minutes and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to say, Thank you for inviting me, but you know this isn't my thing. But as I went off to do that, um, sure enough, I started getting yes or no answers in a very distinct way, and it was just fascinating to me. Um, you know, as an engineer and having no background in anything metaphysical, it was just astonishing that this actually worked. And I think I was hooked in that moment, and just went on from there to do a lot of different things. And and how, and how would you get a yes or no answer? Like say. Um... You ask a question like, say, am I going to be able to make money? Am I going to be healthy? Or, you know, or like, say, you know, what ice cream should I should I <laughs> eat tonight? It's like, you know, how, how do you how do you know if you're getting a yes or no from a rod? I know. Right. Um, well, the practice, you, you start out with ants asking things that are easily verifiable. Right. So um, will it rain today? You can ask that question and get a yes or no. But within 24 four hours, you're going to see if it rained or not. And you have to be very specific and ask, you know, not just will it rain because it's going to rain somewhere in the world, but ask, will it rain in the location that I am within the next 24 hours? So being really specific so that you can verify it. And um, the more you use it, you know, the more accuracy you're going to get, um, the more um, confident you are in it. And um, you work with the rods and they give you your own. So for for me and you to have a pair of rods, we might get a different, the, the, the direction might be different in terms of which way the rods will swing. You know, I might get the two crossing in front of me in an X, or you might get both rods swinging over to the right together. Uh, everybody kind of gets a unique pattern and you just sort of learn that. And um you, you learn the rules about it, too. You don't want to ask questions about other people. You can't, like, make someone else fall in love with you or, you know, things like that. But, it's um, well, yeah. What battery? So, <laughs> it'll say, show me the money. But, yeah, <laughs> right. but, but what I was going to ask you as well, too, with the um, how you get a yes and no with the rods. And how do the rods move? Is it vibration? Is it sound? Is it from rain waves? Is it from your body? And um, how, how, how would you get the answer when, when the rod's moving? How, the, how does a rod move 
giving you like a yes or no answer. Like I said, is it vibration? Is it sound? Is it um, chemistry? Or how, how, how do you get that movement to a yes or no answer with the rod? I believe that it's something that comes from within your body. Honestly, I think there's an inner knowing that we all have. I mean, I didn't know this at the time. I, I you know, honestly hadn't the slightest clue that was crazy to me that it was even happening. But um, I've heard since then, you know, the body doesn't lie. There's like an inner knowing that we have and that we pull energy from the universe or up from the ground. And you ask a question and it comes from within, that even though your conscious mind doesn't know the answer, something within you does know the answer and just sends energy into those rods and causes it to move in a certain pattern. Uh -huh. um, so... Well, you know, that, that's something I'm going to try as well, too. I want to talk more about the book as well, too, and um, other practices with Rebecca Thompson. But first, you listen to the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, over 25 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with author Rebecca Thompson of Rebecca Rising and Sunday at 830 here on the Mike Wagner Show. Talked about um, her, her her journey through, um, you know, you know, with an alcoholic husband, also her marriage, her career. And we also talked about the first thing with dowsing. And um, after you mastered the dowsing, what was the next step that you took as well, too? And before you start becoming more of um, a, a consultant, um, practitioner, principal, and what was the next step after uh, the dowsing method? After the dowsing class, Mike, I was invited to a Reiki class. And um, so for those who don't know about Reiki, that is a, a healing methodology. It is a way to um, use energy, life force energy from the universe um, through our hands. And it's kind of similar to in the if people who read the Bible, they talk about the laying on of hands to heal people in the Bible. So it's very much related to that. And um, it's, it's using your hands to promote healing, relaxation, um, and stress relief. And again, it was something I knew nothing about, had no experience with. And if you'd asked me about it, you know, even just a few years before, I, I would have thought you were crazy. But um, going to a class and spending two days and learning about this, having just come off the dowsing class and was fascinated by just the fact that these rods would move back and forth without me doing anything. Um, so I was intrigued. Right. So somebody else from that class invited me to go to the Reiki and again, not really knowing anything about it. Um, but just again, seeing the movement of energy, seeing how your hands can heat up and um, really promote that uh, feeling of well-being and, and stress relief. Um, this was fascinating to me. So I went on to study that and became what's called a Reiki master, which means I went through three different levels of training um, to learn how to use this even at a distance. So even just using your mind and, um, you know, spirit to believe in that, to um, send energy to someone um, using a proxy, like you could use a stuffed animal or you could do it on your dog, but be thinking about a person hundreds of miles away. And it's, I had it done on me and it was just amazing. It was just that it really worked. And as I said, I wouldn't have believed you um, if you told me about it, but I, I had it happen to me. So I'm a believer. And what, and what are the three levels of training you talked about? So the first level, um, first level of training was just very basic and learning how to do primarily Reiki on yourself and also um, beginning to learn treatments on others. The second level um, was learning more about treatments on others and to send distance Reiki, as I talked about. And then the third level is really kind of a mastery level where you can do all of those things and also teach it to others. That is amazing. And besides the, um, the healing of the hands in Reiki, what else can uh, Reiki do as well? Oh, it can do so many different things. Um, you can use it to clear a space to kind of 
you know, clear negativity. I use it a lot in, in um, conference rooms and things like that. If I get into a room ahead of the group and just kind of use it to clear the negativity from a space, um, you can use it to put energy into objects. I had my teacher used to send me an email and um, I'd open that email and I'd feel like this burst of energy coming out of it. I know that sounds really weird, but I would just feel like whew, like this little puff of energy when I open the email and you can you can kind of infuse it be like be like um, you know when you put those little uh, sprinkles of, of confetti <laughs> into an envelope, <laughs> you're putting like little sprinkles of positive energy into your email and when you open it those those uh, kind of spring out of people. But so there's lots of ways. it's just it's just a way of using energy. Um, in a positive way to promote happiness and well-being and healing and stress relief. That is amazing. And in fact, I thought coffee gave me happiness, not the <laughs> solution. So, yeah. I like my coffee, too. So, <laughs> yeah, no complaints about that. Yeah. <laughs> and then after Reiki as well, too, um, what what did you uh, study afterwards as well, too? This is only up to a principal in coaching and consulting practice. We'll talk in a minute. So what, what next yeah. after I think the next thing I did, I probably started studying about crystals, you know, and again, um, I, it's something I would have said was a superstition or people kind of carrying around a lucky charm, you know, working with crystals. And I had heard about that, but I didn't think much of it. Um, but as I began to study them, um, it, it really had quite an intersection with science, because if you think about it, you know, we're all made up of molecules and atoms and energy that vibrates and, um, as, as our human bodies are, and we're mostly made up of water, which is very fluid, but crystals have a much more stable molecular structure. And so they um, have a different vibrational level. And because they are so um, much more stable, they can have an influence on us being mostly made of water. And so it, it's actually scientific <laughs> in terms of the way that they influence us. And because uh, all the different crystals have different molecular structures, they have different properties and can influence us in different ways. So I believe that there's a, uh, much more intersection between science and uh, the metaphysical than is often believed or noticed. You, t you talked about the different crystals as well, too, in a person. And what types of other crystals are there as well? Oh, there's lots of different kinds of crystals out in the world, you know, that you see all different colors, you know, any any rock, <laughs> right? Like a, a semi-precious stone, like rose quartz is a pink crystal and obsidian is a black crystal. And they all have different meanings. Rose quartz is one that promotes love and well-being. And obsidian being is black and very dense and it promotes stability and groundedness. So there's just, they all have different properties and different uses and, um, you know, they, they can influence us in different ways and support us if we choose to use them that way. Um, and, and also too, also reading as well too, thinking about with um, all the energies out there and crystals and being outside and everything. And also we also read in there too, that you have conversations with the moon. You can uh, tell us more about that. I sure will, Mike. Um, so what happened was, so yeah, meanwhile, I'm going to all these classes, you know, and I didn't even know why, I just kind of distract myself or just to have some fun or learn some new things. And I was learning along the way and I was enjoying it and, you know, kind of opening up my mind to some new things. And meanwhile, um, my ex-husband now um, was still struggling with alcohol. He was losing jobs and getting new jobs. And, you know, we had made a couple moves and he was going to move out of state for a new job. And I was trying to decide at that point, was I going to go with him to this new job or was I going to stay where I was? And, you know, you, we're trying to make a big decision like that. You're hearing different voices in your head that are telling you different things to do. And uh, so I was really struggling with this decision, but um, one night my dog woke me up in the night and it had to go out and she wasn't generally inclined to do that. But, uh, I was like, uh, you know, she must have to go out. So I get up to take her out and we go outside and there was this giant, beautiful full moon in the sky. And I don't know what else to say other than it seemed like it was talking to me, <laughs> you know, like I heard a voice in my head, um, at the same time as I was looking at this moon. And um, what I heard was, you're missing the point. And I thought, you're missing the point. You know, what does that mean? And um, the voice went on to say, it's not about you know, what you're going to do and what city you're going to live in, whether you stay or whether you go. It's not about you, what you do. It's about how do you want to feel? Who do you want to be in this world? And how do you want to feel? 
And that was, that was kind of a revelation to me, you know, cause I was just focused on the decision of, you know, stay or move, stay or move. Um, so I started thinking more about how I felt and we went on to have subsequent conversations on different nights. Uh, same thing would happen. The dog would get me up. We'd go out in the night and it, the moon would talk to me and the kinds of things that uh, kinds of messages I received were around slowing down and listening to my heart. So stop being so busy. You know, I was addicted to all the activity of my life, you know, managing the household and my job and raising the kids and all the things, all keeping the balls in the air was what I always used to say. I was so busy keeping the balls in the air. I didn't have time to listen to my own heart. She said, just, you know, slow down and, and think about what you really want. And um, so that's what I started to do. And eventually that led me on a different path. And, and and, and is it more effective when they have a full moon or does it matter what size of moon, like say with half moon or waning moon, waxing or even crescent? Does that have to be a full moon or can it be like uh, an, an, any size or type of moon? It actually can be any size or type of moon. It can be the new moon that's not even visible. You know, and I will say to myself, well, I know the moon's out there, whether I can see it or not. And I initiate conversations with the moon now. Uh, you know, I don't have to wait to be awakened, you know, in the night and go out there. But um I think that first time it being so big and full, one of those great big low in the sky moons, is it really got my attention that first time. But since then, it's it's it can be any any time. And I, I studied about the moon too and learned more about it. And um, you know, there's a lot of people that that work with the moon regularly, and they will say that when the moon is um, waxing and good, getting larger towards the full moon, that's a time to take on new things and take on new projects. The moon is getting bigger. And then when the moon is getting smaller, that's a time to release things and let things go. Mm. Um, so it's kind of interesting. You can kind of work with the moon that way. Do, do, do you see the moon being like a pizza pie? That's amore. <laughs> that's amore. Yes. That's a great song. <laughs> yeah, And of course, you know, I actually had a first conversation with the moon when I was five years old. You know, I said, those ask, I heard the astronauts say, one, one small step for man, one giant step for mankind. That's a conversation I heard in 1969. That's my experience. <laughs> <laughs> I had that one, too. Yeah, I, I do remember that day vividly when I was and, a little girl. And we all did, of course. Let's go back to the time at Sunday at 830. But first, listen to the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com. It's powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be heard on the MikeWidenerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Widener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, over 25 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And also keep up to date with all the latest updates on the Mike Widener Show page on Facebook and show your support on PayPal as well. We're here with author Rebecca Thompson of Rebecca Rising. And Sunday at 8.30 here on the Mike Widener Show talked about a good portion of Rebecca Rising and, of course, her experience and also the teachings, what she's learned. And we go to Sunday at 8.30, two decades of life playing and um Let's uh, have you talk about the book. Sunday. Sure. Sunday at 30. Absolutely. So um, I mentioned that throughout this whole process, I had a very good friend. Her name is Darlene Ryan. And we worked together at uh, Kodak years ago when we were young engineers and we were young moms together, raised our kids at the same time. And we started doing a life planning process that we originally learned in a course that we took that was supposed to help us be more productive at work. <laughs> and and um, so we, uh, we took this class and we started using it in all aspects of our life. And we really... Um, revise the process to make it our own and continue to use it for over 20 years. And we would tell people about it and they'd say, wow, anything that you use for over 20 years, you know, it seems to be, um, you know, something worthwhile. You guys should write about it. And I told you about, you know, this, that Darlene's daughter had also advised us to write a book. 
Um, so it was quite a number of years ago that we started talking about writing it and we'd put it on our plan. We'd set goals. We'd say, oh, we're each going to write a chapter, you know, and, and life kind of got in the way. We didn't do very well at getting that done. Uh, so a couple of years ago, we decided we were just going to take a week and we were going to see what we had and then we were just going to sit down and write it. So we actually kind of took a few days vacation and went off and laid out everything that we had and saw where the holes were and we just got busy and we wrote it. And so the book documents the process that we use for life planning, setting our our vision and our goals and our reading list and all the things that we do. We go on an annual retreat each year. Um, so it describes that entire process and it also gives worksheets in the back of the book in an appendix so that uh, anyone can use this process to create their own life plan. And it also has our reading list. As I said, we picked uh, about a dozen books every year over 20 years plus. And so there are almost 250 books on this list. And we've had people tell us that just getting that list of books that we read over the years was worth the price of the book. Uh -huh. um, it's, it's quite an eclectic list. I mean, it goes anywhere from Seven Habits of Highly Effective People to Jane Eyre, <laughs> you know, to the Bible, to the Da Vinci Code. I mean, it's, it's all over the map. It's work-related books and it's novels and self-help books and just, just books that we thought would be fun to read that were interesting to us. Um, but it's so it's it's quite an eclectic list, and um, now you can add our book to that list too. <laughs> and who are some of your favorite writers growing up? Some of my favorite writers growing up. Um, boy, when I was a kid, I mean, Gone with the Wind <laughs> was one of my big. I can remember my mother giving me that book when I was in eighth grade, and I was homesick from school. She brought that book in when I was sick in bed, and she said, "Here, read this." And it was probably just to keep me busy while I was sick and at home because it's a big, thick one. But I loved that, and I loved all the Anne of Green Gables books when I was a kid. And um, you know, as I got older, of course, the Lord of the Rings and um, reading to my kids Harry Potter. I still enjoy those books, you know, that I read to my kids and. Um, I, I do like uh, quite an eclectic Jane Austen. You know, I like those books and all different kinds of things. All different uh, kinds. I like and, to read a lot of fiction just because it relaxes me. It, it does sound like it as well, too. And of course, with all the um, the chronicling and everything else. And this also led you to be in principle of Evolve Without Limits. And uh, tell us more about that. Yeah, so that's my consulting and coaching business now. Um, throughout this whole process, you know, while I was um, finding myself and my personal power and going through my alcoholic marriage, I still was maintaining my career, right? So I was an industrial engineer turned organization development consultant. So I do, I still do organization development consulting, which is primarily team building and leadership development and executive coaching. So I, I have a, a foot in the corporate world. And I also do some one-on-one -on -one coaching with individuals who uh, might be in similar situations that I was in, feeling stuck in their lives or feeling like they might want to be more intentional about the life that they're trying to create. And so I coach them using our Sunday at 830 life planning process to kind of look at all the different areas of your life and what would you like to achieve in each of those areas? What would, How would you like to feel and what would you like to do or be or have? And how can you start to set some goals and move in the direction that you'd like to go? So I do some one-on-one -on -one coaching and some um, group workshops, and I also am working on an online course using the Site 8830 process. So that should be available soon. And, and it sounds amazing. And uh, how can people get a whole, whole of you in your classes? Yeah, um, you can visit me at my website, which is evolvewithoutlimits.com. You can email directly at Rebecca at evolvewithoutlimits.com. And my books are available on Amazon and also through links on my website. And they're available on both uh, Kindle and paperback and I'm working on an audio book of Rebecca Rising as well. That's fantastic. Author Rebecca Thompson with uh, Rebecca Rising and Sunday at 830 here on the Mike Wagner Show. And we have just a few minutes here. You've been fantastic. Look, boy, I'm back on soon. And uh, once again, what other plans do you have coming up for 2020 and beyond? Yeah, 20. Well, you know what? I'm just starting to work on another book and it's going to be about how I meet my true love. And I haven't met him yet, <laughs> but I'm putting it out in the universe, <laughs> writing about the process. Why um, <laughs> and so um, that's what the next book's going to be about, and I'm I'm working on that now. That is amazing. I got my uh, rod with me. It's like you know. It's like you know. Is, is she going to meet in 2020? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> What's it telling you, Mike? I need to know. <laughs> uh, it says. Let me get back to you later. <laughs> okay. I'm so we'll do that. <laughs> and okay. who do you 
And who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Who do I consider my the biggest influence? Oh my goodness. There's so many, I've had so many wonderful teachers and I am super grateful, but um, I'd have to say, you know, probably my friend Darlene, um, who's been with me for over 20 years and by my side through thick and thin and, and the good and the bad. Okay. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? My best advice would be to recognize your own worth, um, to realize that you have way more power than you know. You are stronger than you know. You can create the life you want. So go for it because you're worth it. Mm -hmm. And that's very true. Once again, author Rebecca Thompson on the Mike Wagner Show, Rebecca Rising, and Sunday at 830. A big thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. Looking forward to having you in soon. Once again, tell us about your upcoming projects, your website, and how do people contact you? Where can people purchase your books? Yes, thank you, Mike. Um, you can purchase my books through Amazon. Um, they are available in paperback and in Kindle version. You can also visit me at my website, www.evolvewithoutlimits.com. You can email me directly at Rebecca at evolvewithoutlimits.com. So please come and visit me there. I have uh, lots of things cooking for 2020 and beyond. Sounds great, Rebecca. Big thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. Looking forward to hearing you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep yourself to date. Looking forward to you back on 2020 and beyond. And um, we'll see you at the moon. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. It's my pleasure to be here.